Welcome back. So we've been talking about data science and machine learning, and you can't talk about machine learning nowadays without talking about neural networks. So I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what neural networks are, what they can do, what they can't do, uh, strengths and limitations, a bit about their architecture, how to program them, how to understand kind of where they came from, uh, and what, what you can do with them now. Okay, so neural networks are an incredibly powerful and important aspect of machine learning. There are great uh, modeling capabilities of networks, but I do want to emphasize that um, neural networks are not all that there is to machine learning. There's a lot more, uh, but this is kind of one of the most important and well-used uh, architectures in machine learning today. And part of the reason uh, we like them so much and the, the community is adopting these so rapidly is because they are very, very expressive architectures. So, so somehow a neural network is a framework for learning models from data. And that framework has a lot of degrees of freedom. It's not terribly constrained. And so there's a lot of expressive capability in these neural networks. They're able to, to capture lots of phenomena that we observe in, in the real world from uh, example data sets. And then maybe a more mathematical way of, of describing what we mean by expressive is that neural networks are good at approximating arbitrary input-output functions. So if I have uh, data with inputs and outputs, and I have enough training data, a rich enough and large enough training data set, then neural networks uh, are very, very good at, at arbitrarily approximating uh, even very nasty, complicated input-output functions. And there's mathematical theory around this that, that proves that if you have enough and rich enough data and a sufficiently uh, large neural network architecture, then you can, you can describe these very complex functions. Now, a huge caveat, something really important to mention, is that these neural networks work in the big data limit. When you have lots and lots of examples of your data, um, the, the data and what the outcomes are. So think of Google's image uh, library or Facebook's image library. They have so much training data that most of what they, you will see in the future is somehow in that training data. And so neural networks are great when you have vast training data sets. And when the thing you want to use that neural network for uh, in the future is likely to be similar to what you've seen in the past. So I would call that kind of an interpolation problem. Neural networks are great for big interpolation problems. They can approximate big, nasty interpolators if you have rich enough training data for, for the past. Okay, so that's important. Neural networks have been around for a really long time. They've been around for decades. Uh, Rosenblatt came up with this perceptron in 1958. Uh, this was, I think, the earliest uh, neural network, and this was used for binary classification. Um, pretty interesting idea. And there was a tremendous amount of interest and investment and development in neural networks for decades uh, after this. And there's this idea that these neural networks are mimicking some of the functionality in biological systems, in animals, uh, you know, humans, and things like that. And so there was a lot of interest both in the neuroscience community and in the computer science uh, and applied math and statistics communities in what were the capabilities of these. But because of limitations in the data and the computational power at the time, uh, this kind of stalled out in the, the late 70s and 80s in what's known as the AI winter. So there's this big overhyping uh, of capabilities, the actual architectures couldn't deliver because of limitations of the time, and so these fell out of fashion for, for decades. Until uh, 2012, with this ImageNet challenge where deep neural networks trained on vast data sets in new computational architectures, these GPUs, uh, graphics processing units, this kind of culmination of big data, big labeled data sets, much more powerful computers and that could facilitate the training of deep neural network architectures uh, really was the reviving point uh, for neural networks. So in 2012, people couldn't believe how, uh, how significant the performance improvement in neural networks had become, and they beat all of the other leading algorithms in, uh, in this image classification challenge. And since then, in a very short period of time, neural networks have risen uh, to the top of the performance metrics in many, many, many 
uh, challenges, both in speech recognition, natural language processing, translation, uh, image classification, and really um, are kind of setting the standard for what is possible in lots of these, these um, applications where you have huge data sets and you want to do arbitrary function approximation, okay, or kind of interpolation based on your massive, massive training data set. Okay, um, and I should again point out that these neural networks are inspired in principle by biological systems. So if you believe that this eagle is uh, performing this incredible flight maneuver and control and interacting with its environment, uh, with its brain and its visual system, then in principle it has a network of neurons that are, are, are performing this incredibly complex task. Now whether or not our artificial neural networks, our, our silicon neural networks, uh, have anything to do with the actual biology, I mean that's up for, for grabs. And, and there's lots and lots of research kind of at the interface of neuroscience and computer science to, to see what kind of connections and comparisons we can make. What can we learn from biological systems that will help our neural networks? What can we learn when we build and design these neural networks that can teach us about these biological systems? Um, and a lot of this is actually inspired by, by visual systems in particular, these kind of multi-layered information processing architectures where you take uh, very high resolution information and pass it through layers of abstraction uh, and you know, humans and animals can pull out objects and motion and, and abstract that this collection of pixels is an eagle or a word and we have these abstractions, okay? And that's the kind of thing that we want our neural network to be able to do is take this very high dimensional uh, input data, complex data with lots going on and distill out through maybe these layers of processing different abstractions that we can use to build models. Okay, so I'll talk a lot more about what neural networks are, how they're built, uh, the history, and what is capable, what our capabilities are now, and where it's going. Okay, thank you.